dear students this is sk sugla in today's class i am going to talk about a topic called adjective equivalent in this class we will see what adjective equivalents are but before we go into this topic we need to understand what adjectives are before understanding what adjectives are you won't be able to understand what adjective equivalents are so let's see first what adjectives are so adjectives are if we define adjective adjectives are word any word that gives a word that gives any information about a noun or noun equivalent is called adjective you can simply define adjective as adjective is a word that gives any information about a noun or noun equivalent when i say noun equivalent i am referring to words that act like noun like pronoun like gerund and any other words so if we use noun anywhere in the sentence and for that particular noun we use another word that gives any information about that noun this word would be called adjective the information can be any information as it is written here the information may be about the size of this noun the shape of this noun the color of this noun the number of this noun the quantity of this noun the quality of this noun the origin of this noun or any other information so a word adjective is a word that can give any information about a noun that is present in a sentence let's see with the help of some examples if i say i have i have a car i have a car in this sentence if i use one more word and i put that word here red if i use red here if i write this sentence like i have a red car so car is a noun here and the red word red is a word that gives some information about this noun so this can be called adjective let's see the uh, one more example Maria likes Maria likes coffee and if i put one more word in this sentence i write this word cold what this word cold does this word cold gives some information about this coffee so coffee is noun here and cold is adjective i would like to give one more example Uh, an example where i will be using more than one adjective see the king was old the way was long and the wind was cold the wind was cool so in this sentence i have used more than one adjective if we read this sentence carefully we will see the word old this word old gives some information about the king so this is adjective this old is adjective here like in this sentence cold and red if we move further into this sentence we see the way was long here the word long gives information about this noun way so long is also an adjective if you move ahead in the sentence we see and the wind was cold here 
Cold is a word that gives information about the noun wind. So cold is also an adjective. So in a sentence, we can use more than one adjective. So adjective basically gives some information about noun. So if you have understood what adjective is, you can easily understand adjective equivalent. So let's go into adjective equivalent. This is actually our topic in today's class. <coughs> let's see. We have got what adjective is. We have understood what adjective is. Now let's see what adjective equivalents are. Let me clear this board first so that I can write new stuff here, new things here. Now we are ready. We are ready to learn this topic adjective equivalent. So let me write something about adjective equivalent first, then I will explain what adjective equivalents are. Let's see. A word or a group of words that are not basically adjectives but they words or groups of words or group of words words or group of words that are not basically adjective but they do the work of adjective do the work of adjectives they are called they are called adjective equivalents adjective equivalents so we can simply define adjective equivalents as words I will not write article A here because I have used plural noun. Words or group of words that are not basically adjective but they do the work of adjective. If a word which is not actually adjective or a group of words which is not actually which is not originally adjective but they do the work of adjective they will be referred as adjective equivalents. There are a variety of adjective equivalents in English and we are going to take a look at them one by one. So I am going to remove this definition then we will see different categories of adjective equivalents. Let's see, let's observe and study them one by one. The first category of adjective equivalents. First category of adjective equivalents are noun in apposition. Noun in apposition. So, <coughs> noun coming in apposition, they are actually adjective equivalents. They are not originally adjectives, but because of the fact that they do the work of adjective, they are termed as adjective equivalents. So first let's see what noun in apposition is. If we put a noun and after that noun, if we put another noun or noun group and this noun or noun group gives some information about the first noun, this noun. So the second noun will be called noun in apposition. So this second noun or noun group gives some information about the first noun. They can be turned as, these noun in a position can be turned as adjective equivalent. Because they help the second noun or the noun coming in a position, they help identify the first noun. They identify what, what kind of information they give. 
they identify the first noun. Let's see the example. If I write Dhoni and I put a comma here, Dhoni, the captain, the Dhoni, the captain made, Dhoni, the captain made 50 runs. So in this sentence, you can clearly see I have used the noun Dhoni here and immediately after the noun, I have put a comma and after that comma, I have put another noun, the captain. So the second noun coming immediately after the first noun followed by a comma, this noun can be called noun in apposition. Noun in apposition. So this noun in apposition is not originally adjective, but it is doing the work of adjective because it is giving some information about the first noun, Dhoni. I will give some another example. One more example I, will, I want to give here in this. Let's see. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, the president. If I want to give some more information, I can write the president of America. Donald Trump, the president of America, has, has given this statement, has given this statement. So you can clearly see Donald Trump is the noun here and immediately after Donald Trump, I have used a noun group, the president of America. This president of America term is identifying the first noun. This is a noun group and this noun group is in apposition to the first noun and it is giving information about the first noun so doing the work of adjective and because of the fact it is doing the work of adjective it can be called adjective equivalent because they are not originally adjective they are doing the work of adjective so the first category of adjective equivalents are noun in apposition let's see the second category i i hope you have got it Let's move to the second category of adjective equivalence. The second category of adjective equivalence are noun in Possessive case. Noun in possessive case. As you all know that there are three cases of noun. Nominative case, objective case and possessive case. And if, you, if we want to convert a noun into possessive case, we have to use apostrophe s after it. If we write a noun and we put apostrophe s, this noun becomes in possessive case. And the, this rule says that if a noun goes into possessive case, it no longer remains noun. It becomes adjective. It starts doing the work of adjective. And because it starts doing the work of adjective, it acts as adjective equivalent. So this can be termed as adjective equivalent. It can be termed as, termed as adjective equivalent. Say, if I give this example, Mike. Mike is noun here. If I put an apostrophe S here, Mike's. So when you put an apostrophe S after a noun, it becomes, this noun gets into possessive case. It turns into possessive case. And when it turns into possessive case, it immediately requires another noun after it. You have to put another noun here. Otherwise, this does not make any sense. You will have to put another noun here like Mike's car or Mike's computer or any other noun you want to put. And once you 
put another noun here. This first noun in possessive case gives information about this noun following it. So it here Mike's gives information about this car. It gives information about the owner of this car. So this noun in possessive case becomes and does the work of adjective. So it can be called adjective equivalent. So whenever we convert a noun into possessive case, actually it becomes adjective because it starts doing the work of adjective and it is not originally adjective. So we can term it as adjective equivalent. So the second category of adjective equivalent is noun in possessive case. Let's move into the third category of adjective equivalent. Now come to the third category of adjective equivalence. The third category of adjective equivalence are present participles. Present participles. Present participles are basically a form of verb that ends in ing. ing form of verbs. They are ing forms of ing form of verb. Or they are simply called V4. We all know that present participle is used to make continuous tenses. Present continuous tenses, uh, present continuous tense, past continuous tense and future continuous tense. So present participle is used in making continuous tense. So that is, that is its original function. But when present participle starts doing the work of adjective, it can be term, termed as adjective equivalent. Let's see the example. The dog is barking. The dog is barking ferociously. The dog is barking ferociously. In this sentence, I have used V for barking here and in this sentence barking in with the help of is this is auxiliary verb it is making a tense here it is making present continuous tense but i would like to draw your attention to the second example see the second example barking dogs seldom bite sometimes they bite also but this is the uh, this is an important idiom and phrase so see in this example barking dogs seldom bite here barking is the v4 in the first sentence is it is making a tense it is making present continuous tense but in the second sentence same word barking ending in ing it is not making tense here here its grammatical function has changed. Here barking gives some information about the noun dogs. So it is doing the work of adjective. But because of the fact it is not originally adjective, we cannot call it adjective. We should call it adjective equivalent. This is adjective equivalent. So whenever present participle is present in a sentence and it is not making tense there, then you should clearly understand that there present participle is doing nothing but uh, doing the work of adjective equivalent. So present participle are adjective equivalent, our third category of adjective equivalent. Now see the fourth category of adjective equivalent. Now let's see the <coughs> fourth category of adjective equivalence. Past participles. We'll see past participles. Past participles are the words that end in ed, mostly end in ed, and they are called v3. So past participle is also adjective equivalent. How it is adjective equivalent? Let's see. Past 
past participles also act like adjective but let me tell you its original function the main function of past participle is to form perfect tenses it can form present perfect it can form past perfect and it can form future perfect tense so past participle is used in forming perfect tenses but when they are not forming tense in a sentence and is still present in the sentence they do the work of adjective and there they are called adjective equivalents let's see the example <coughs> maria has broken her mirror yeah maria has broken the mirror it is in this sentence this v3 this parts participle makes tense with the help of this auxiliary verb has it makes tense here so it is forming tense here but let's see the another example let's see see lives in a broken family she lives in a broken family here i have used the same word broken but here broken is not forming any tense it is giving information about this noun and doing the work of adjective it is not basically adjective it is a form of verb doing the work of adjective so it is a verbal adjective and it can be called as adjective equivalent so we have seen the fourth category of adjective equivalent let's see the fifth category of adjective equivalent and the fifth category is very much used in sentences let's see the fifth category and the fifth category of adjective equivalents are is in fact the fifth category is prepositional phrase prepositional phrase sometimes prepositional phrase can act like adjective by giving some information about a noun and when it does the function of adjective it can be called adjective equivalent and how what is the structure of a prepositional phrase a prepositional phrase is like preposition preposition plus noun preposition plus noun is prepositional phrase so if a prepositional phrase gives some information about any noun it becomes adjective and it can be called adjective equivalent let's see the example gold chain i am giving a simple example here gold chain here chain is noun and gold is acting like an adjective this is an adjective if i write this in another way if i write a chain of gold like gold is doing the work of adjective here in the same manner of gold is a prepositional phrase of gold is a prepositional phrase doing the work of adjective how is it doing the work of adjective because here also of gold is giving some information about this noun chain so of gold is a prepositional phrase doing the work of adjective so it is an it can be called as prepositional it can be called as a prepositional phrase or adjective equivalent this is adjective equivalent let me give you one more example let's see the tall woman in red sari or in jeans the tall woman in jeans here woman is noun tall is normal adjective the is article here and in jeans is a prepositional phrase preposition plus noun this is prepositional phrase 
but this prepositional phrase here is doing the work of adjective. It is giving some information about this woman. So, because of the fact it is doing the work of adjective, it can be called adjective equivalent. So, this kind of adjective equivalent is frequently used in sentences. Let's move to the sixth category of adjective equivalent. We'll see the sixth category of adjective equivalent. The sixth category of adjective equivalent is the sixth category of adjective equivalent is past participle clause. Past participle clause. Past participle clause is a clause that starts with past participle. Its structure can be like this. Past participle plus other words. If past participle plus other words, if they do the work of adjective, they can also be called adjective equivalent. Let's see the example. The dress made of silk. Here you can clearly say, see dress is noun here, the is article and made of silk. It starts with past participle and it is followed by other words. This is past participle plus other words. And made of silk gives information about this dress. So this group of word made of silk starts with past participle. So it can be referred as participle clause. Basically it is a, a, basically it is a relative clause but we have removed relative pronoun here. So it looks like past participle clause. So past participle clause can also act like adjective equivalent like in this sentence. One more example you can see. The books kept on the table. The books kept on the table. Here books, books the noun books is uh, noun here. The is article and kept on the table. Kept on the table is past participle clause. It starts with past participle kept. And this gives information about the books. So it does the work of adjective. Because of the fact it is they are not originally adjective. They can be, can be called as adjective. Adjective equivalent. So a past participle clause is also an adjective equivalent. Let's see the seventh category. Seventh category of adjective equivalent is present participle clause present participle clause like I told you that present participle or past participle separately can act as, act as adjective their clause can also act as adjective equivalent so its a structure would be like this present participle plus other words Present participle plus other words that will make present participle clause. See the help of, let's see the, see it with the help of example. We will see the example and then we can easily understand what present participle clause is. See the example of present participle clause. The man the man lying on the floor. The man lying on the floor. In this example, you can clearly see that man is noun, though is different article, and lying on the floor is a clause that starts with present participle, and that is why I am calling it present participle clause. It is also a relative clause basically. But relative noun, uh, relative noun has been removed, so I can call it present participle clause. And this gives information about this noun, so it can also be called as adjective equivalent. Let's see the F category of 
adjective valent that is infinitive clause infinitive clause infinitive clause infinitive clause will start with a with an infinitive plus other word its structure would be like that infinitive plus other words so sometimes infinitive clause or infinitive plus other words also do the work of adjective we can see this in this example let's see the example so that we can see infinitive clause the vaccine to treat various respiratory infections the vaccine to treat various respiratory infections in this example you can see vaccine is noun and to treat various respiratory infection this is infinitive clause it starts with infinitive and it gives information about the vaccine so it can also be called as adjective equivalent so infinitive clause can also sometimes act like adjective so they can also be termed as adjective equivalent let's see the ninth category of adjective equivalent ninth category of adjective equivalent is basically adjective phrase sometimes an adjective alone cannot give information about a noun it has to come with some other words so the ninth category of word is adjective adjective phrase so adjective phrase is basically a phrase beginning with adjective adjective plus other words adjective plus other words is basically adjective phrase so sometimes a single adjective cannot give information about a noun completely it has to be accompanied by some other words so in that case that will be called adjective